Leadheads, we are back with another episode of the Talking Lead Podcast. Seven years of educating the uneducated. Thanks for tuning in again, and I hope you guys had an opportunity to listen to our last episode where we had Joe Weir from LEO Takedown discussing their innovative product that will allow your AR-15 to be easily broken down and stored or easily switch out calibers from 223 all the way up to 450 SOCOM just with their quick detach system. And I did a video on that, so I hope you guys had an opportunity to watch that video where uh, I had some issues installing mine and Joe corrected me and uh, I thought, well, if I'm having issues, there's probably some other people that might have issues with that one step. So we kind of did a little clarity on that one part of the installation. Uh, if you want full installation instructions, go to their website. They've got some videos there. Uh, but I have had some emails from you leadheads, and you did take advantage of that 10% discount code that Joe offered exclusive to the Leadhead Brigade. If you go to LEO Takedown's website, and use the code LEADHEAD, you're going to get 10% off. And I think by now they've got that new, they've got the uppers installed with their, the LEO takedown module already installed on there. And all you're going to have to do is um, put the, the coupler on your barrel, install that piece. So I was glad to see that uh, some of you LEADHEADs have already gone ahead and taken advantage of that discount code with LEO takedown. That is the best thing that you can do to support uh, this podcast because we bring it to you free. Been bringing it to you free for s- over seven years now. Support those that support the podcast. That's how you. Uh, that's how you support us. So go buy our sponsors' products. Go to their social media. Let them know how much you appreciate them. How much you enjoy their products. And take advantage of those discount codes when we have them available. Also, Mission First Tactical. Uh, we dropped another discount code for Mission First Tactical, 20% off. You use the code LEADHEAD at their website, and that's good for anything there from their holsters to their AR-15 accessories to their new dump trays, tactical dump trays and tactical wallets, uh, which you can get some exclusive LEADHEAD Brigade logoed dump trays and wallets there uh, to their pepper spray, which we talked about their pepper spray a couple of episodes ago. Um, but 20% off, that's still in effect. You go to missionfirsttactical.com, and uh, it's good on your purchase, any of your purchases there. So this week, I don't have any special guests that's going to be joining me, uh, but I do have some great interviews. And amongst everything that's going on in our world right now, specifically uh, you know, in the United States and North America, I'm sure everybody's heard about the riots that have been going on there in Minnesota. And all the the chaos that is ensuing there, it's just ridiculous, it's crazy. So if we've got any lead heads in that area that are listening to us right now, just stay safe, be smart, and uh, protect yourself, protect your family, protect your property. You have the right to do so. And then another thing going on uh, up north, even further north to our Canadian brothers and sisters, uh, you know, th- there was a shooting there not too long ago. And their prime minister there in Canada, Trudeau, has uh, evoked a gun ban. And what, I, what we're going to do next week is I'm going to have some, some of our lead heads from Canada be on the show and talk about how this gun ban, uh, how they're dealing with it, how it's affecting them, how it's affecting the whole gun culture in Canada. So we're gonna we're gonna have hopefully a, a hunter side, uh, a law enforcement side, and, and then we're gonna have someone who's on the uh, gun rights side there in Canada. So that'll be a good show, and that's gonna be coming at you next episode. Uh, but in in the meantime, to to take your mind off of all the the shenanigans and the chaos and. Uh, you know, people getting used to getting back into society amongst one another <laughs> and all the chaos that's ensuing over that. Uh, I thought we'd just kind of kick it back a little bit and uh, let's talk some conservation. And what better person to talk hunting and conservation than our good buddy C.J. Buck? 
Uh, as everybody knows, Buck Nas was the official lead quarters of Talking Lead during the 2020 SHOT Show this year. And uh, we were fortunate enough to have the chief of staff of the Boone and Crockett Club, Tony Shonen, drop by and discuss Boone and Crockett, the club, the history, and how they have been paving the way for the hunting and conservation ethics uh, since 1887. So that's going to be a great interview. A uh, little change from the norm to give you guys a little uh, break from all this chaos that's been going on. And then I've got a, another interview that I think you guys are going to also enjoy, you leadheads are going to enjoy. And it's um, it was challenging to say the least, but it was a fun interview. And just I just ask that you you bear with it. Um, my guests for, for that interview are foreigners. They're from Italy, and they have a bit of an accent, uh, but they do very well. So if you just you just listen closely, you know you can you can stay tuned in tuned in and, and keep up with the conversation. But it's the the gang from Garmont Tactical Boots, and I'm sure that you leadheads who are into the outdoor hiking and climbing uh, are familiar with the Garmont brand of outdoor shoes. They make some really high end uh, hiking boots and shoes. And now they've gotten into the tactical boots. And we've got Peter, who is the president of Garmont, Franco, and Agnes. And um, I have a good time with them. It was a little dis- difficult uh, for me to understand them, you know, right there in person. But uh, great people, great sense of humor. And these tactical boots, I can tell you firsthand because they sent me some to try out, are really, really good, you know, really top notch boots. That's another one that you guys are going to enjoy. And we'll get back into the Talking Lead Jack Wagon Train and uh, Lead Head Brigade Heroes uh, next week. But I just kind of want to real quickly go through some of these uh, top news stories. And and God forbid that you rely on me for the news because you know that I don't do that. (laughs) Uh, Obviously, the protest in Minneapolis, Minnesota over um, the George Floyd death. Is, is happening and going on and lots of buffoonery going on there on both sides. Uh, the, is it the, the mayor or the governor there who was giving out mask to the rioters, <laughs> actually giving mask out to the rioters, um, to try and uh, put my finger quotes to prevent the spread of the COVID-19, but yet they still won't let churches, uh, congregate which is completely ridiculous. Um, Here's another uh, top news headline going on here, and I'm reading from Fox News, uh, and this guy definitely needs to be be recognized. You guys should go read this story. Kansas soldier saves countless lives by driving truck into active shooter. Uh, And just a, a quick recap on this story is uh, Sergeant Major David Royer, was on a phone call with his fiance Wednesday morning while stuck in traffic, and then uh, he saw uh, a man of him pull a rifle out of his vehicle and start shooting. Uh, and then, of course, the story goes on as he used his vehicle to run the guy over and prevent what could have been massive murders. So, uh, if I were doing a lead head brigade hero, lead force one hero, uh, this guy definitely makes that. Uh, so welcome to the Lead Head Brigade Heroes, Lead Force One, David Royer, Master Sergeant David Royer. Uh, and then, of course, exciting to me is, uh, you know, I'm big into aeronautics and space and space travel and NASA and SpaceX and where we're headed with all that. And, uh, you know, we've got the big SpaceX launch and NASA that's supposed to be happening here any day now. It got postponed, but that's something I'm keeping an eye on and I'm interested in. So anyway, I just wanted to make sure that we got one of our heroes acknowledged uh, during this episode. Didn't completely want to blow that off, but if you guys want to send your jack wagons and your lead head brigade heroes in, email those to me, talkingletgmail.com, and uh, we'll make sure that we read those on air, um, hopefully next episode. Let's go ahead and get into our interviews with 
the Boone and Crockett Club, and Garmont Boots. Keith likes everything about the great outdoors. He's a lot like us. Whether we're bow hunting in the backcountry or plinking in the backyard, we want to enjoy each experience to the fullest. kel 22 caliber P-17 is Heath's go-to pistol for a good time. On the range, on the trail, and anywhere in between. Weighing in at only 14 ounces with a full magazine, its compact size makes it easy to conceal or tuck away in a small pack, pocket, or space. It comes out of the box ready with a fiber optic front sight, a threaded barrel, a Picatinny rail, and a price point for any budget. With three 16-round magazines, it's ready for hours of pure, unadulterated enjoyment. It's easy, it's affordable, it's accurate, and it's a damn sweet marvel of plinking innovation. The kel P-17. It's more bang for less buck. All right, Leadheads, we are back at the 2020 SHOT Show, broadcasting from the official lead quarters of Buck Knives. There you go, Buck Knives. <laughs> and that voice, uh, you guys heard it just a few episodes back when we, we made our little trek to Idaho. Mm -hmm. It's none other than C.J. Buck himself, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome in. Hefty, thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Uh, great SHOT Show so far. First day... It's been extremely busy. I think uh, as far as traffic-wise goes, uh, it seems like it's a little heavier, a little thicker this year. Yeah, it, it feels good. We, uh, it feels like it's been a better quality traffic, too. Yeah. We, we've had great meetings today. Very good. So very productive for you? Very, very much so. Nice, nice. So last time you and I talked, uh, we did a little conservation. We were talking conservation and uh, some mm -hmm. of the organizations that you were involved with. So you guys go back to that episode. Uh, I can't remember the exact number, uh, but it, it, it says uh, C.J. Buck and conservation, so it's easy to find. You guys yep. go back. And uh, one of those organizations that we were talking about was the uh, Boone and Crockett Club and uh, that you are a member of. Yeah, member and a board member. And a board member. Mm -hmm. And uh, you brought along one of your um, co-board members. I guess. Oh, no, I, br I brought along the, the chief of staff for the Boone and Crockett Club, uh, Tony Schoen. The Shonen. man himself. The man himself. Tony Shonen. Thank yep. you, sir. So uh, the Boone and Crockett Club has been around for a long, long time, since 1887? Yes, sir. Wow. And how long have you been with Boone and Crockett? About 14 years. Okay. So you've been there for a minute, too. Yep. A little so bit of a minute, anyway. We, t we touched on it uh, briefly uh, in our conversation that we had uh, a few episodes back. But uh, we're going to get you to talk a little more detail about it, uh, give our listeners uh, some, more, some more rich history about it. Uh, but we're going to introduce our next guest also joining us. As a SHOT Show, you know, you, we bring in all kinds of people, and you never know who's going to be sitting with who during, uh, during the interview. But join us right now, we've got, is it Robert or Robbie? Robbie. So you go by Robbie, and uh, you are with? Heaven Dropped. And this is a nonprofit organization that's doing some remarkable things with parachutes to help out our veteran men and women. Yep, we're a nonprofit organization based out of Largo, Florida. Um, we hire uh, adults with disabilities and veterans with disabilities to hand make a bunch of cool, very unique products. Everything's made out of uh, used military parachutes. Okay, and how did you come across? I mean, this idea. What? So what I actually, in your in your head is like I actually I was, should make things for parachutes. I was not the originator. Um, I got recruited on. Um, I had a for for profit sales background, a non profit experience um, post military, um, and uh, I got recruited on with a non profit. Uh, it's been around for sixty years, actually uh, servicing adults with intellectual developmental disabilities, and they had this idea to bring forth this program to help uh, offset revenue um, and build employment opportunities for the people they serve. And, uh, and I, I brought in veterans with that and said, I, I love the idea of using military parachutes to, to build a, a market. Um, and, uh, you know, we've, we're, 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 we've been around for about six years now. Oh, okay. You've been around a minute then. Yeah. So it, and uh, we just hit our biggest growth. As of a year and a half ago, we became the lead recycling facility for all military parachutes. We actually currently house... 350,000 pounds of military parachutes oh my in, gosh. In, wow. our, in our warehouse in Largo, Florida, 
um, which were the, the largest privately owned supply of military parachutes that exist. So prior prior to you guys coming along, what did the military do with these these parachutes? They just dump them and trash them? And so most of them get burned. Um, they go to landfills. Um, that that's the that's the the sad truth involved with this. I mean, out of these three hundred fifty thousand pounds I talked about, a lot of these are. I mean, we get we get parachutes from World War II still. We wow. got we got parachutes from Korean War. Um, we got a nice backpack that's got a Korean War um, parachute, nineteen fifties era. Um, with the outside is a Vietnam era c- uh, cotton cargo chute. You know, and it's I mean it's a hundred percent military parachutes. And I mean, we get some cool stuff from the Golden Knights rigs. We get uh, oh, Halo cool. Halo jump harnesses with mm-hmm. the SF teams. Um, we get uh, I got I probably got a couple thousand uh, F sixteen fighter jet ejection harnesses. So oh, do, they, do those very materials resonate they with do. people? Yeah, I can they see, do. I can see that. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's it's historical. Like I, you know, like I said, if we didn't purchase them, they they'd end up getting burned. They'd end up in landfills, and I mean. You wouldn't be able to see this Korean War parachute except in a museum. And now we, we make backpacks out of them. We can mm. put forth the future generations, you know, get passed on to, to kids and grandkids um, in a durable, light, very extremely lightweight material. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, industrial strength and some of it's water resistant. So it's a perfect uh, outdoor sports arena to tap into. Now, you guys are making, I mean, a variety of hammocks. Yeah, I, mean, we I got saw a hammock. you had some hammocks out there that you were making uh, from these shoes. Yeah, I yeah. could use one of those right about now. Right, right. this right. second. <laughs> yeah. That's what oh, yeah. I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, this is my first time at Shot Show. Um, this is a, I mean, it's a hell of an event. I, I, I don't think I could see everything in, in, in the whole week that I'm here. I mean, this yeah. is ridiculous. No. So I've, I've pretty much been wandering around all day trying to meet people, talk to people, and, you know, just try not to get lost. Yeah, it was funny because we, we met at the Anterior Alliance uh, Try and Buy event on uh, Sunday, and uh, we got to talking, and I was like, hey, yeah, I'd love to have you come by be on the, the show. And you're like, well, I'm, I'm not going to the show. Yeah. I was like, dude, we got to get you a ticket. Yep. So we begged, borrowed, and steal, and then we I, got you a ticket to I get got, in. And I got in. Was it worth it? It was, was it, it's definitely worth stay? it. stay? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've met a lot of great people in the industry, um, you know, really, really trying to, to go to our next step of getting more retailers to pick our product up. And, I mean, you can't, you can't find a better group of people to get products made out of military parachutes and this and, is your target and, audience and right bullet, here yeah. bullet casing bracelets um <laughs> then then a, a shot show event and i mean it's that's it's fantastic to be a part of this i'm, I'm so glad that i could i can make it down well, I'm, I'm glad it worked out and uh, that you're able to get on here and, and introduce the leadhead brigade to your organization so tell us again the name of your organization it's, and where they can go support it's heaven dropped um our website is heaven okay. um that's dropped d-r-o-p-t um, and uh, you can find us out online. We got all our products online. Um, we, we, we are in retailers. Um, we distribute in conventions all over the country. Okay. And it's a, we have a good time doing it. I mean, I'll tell you, you're on uh, the Facebooks and the Instagrams yeah, yeah, and the Twitters Facebook, and all that? all social media. We're, okay. We're, we're and is there. it just at Heaven Dropped? Yep. You can find us at Heaven Dropped. Um, you can pretty much spell it in any way you want. We, we own the, the, the rights to all those different names. So you can find us, just Google Heaven Dropped. And are you a five hundred three C? We are our, our parent nonprofit is a five hundred one C three status. Five hundred one C. Okay. And they've, they've been in existence for about sixty years. Sixty years. Six zero. Wow. And is that Evergreen? Is That's that Evergreen the? Life Services. So we're, okay. they're based out of Haunton, Louisiana. Gotcha. Very good. And no, we do not. Your, we do not make parachute pants. Uh, that was going to be. I was. I was trying to build up to that. Dad, I, mean, <laughs> I was I, say, is MC Hammer your client? I had a. I had a guy interview me. Um, he did a live show um, for the news station local in our area, and he. He happened to be friends on social media with uh, MC Hammer, and so he tagged him and said, "Hey, oh, wow. you want some real parachute <laughs> pants? I know. I know the place." <laughs> So with this, and I want to work with the historical aspect of this. So you're saying you even get stuff from World War II. Where are they finding these these shoots? Just you know what? I I can't even imagine what dark cave dungeon these things have been sitting in for that long. Right. But I mean, when we get them, they're um, they're dusty. They've been sitting for a while. I mean, they, they, we get them palletized. Um, our contract's about thirty eight thousand pounds quarterly. So it's a hit or miss what we get. Um, you know, we get to learn new things about what they've been doing with parachutes over the the, the past uh conflicts and generations how they've evolved oh and yeah i mean different materials and things that, like that different that, weaves that's what was crazy about the uh korean war parachute is we got these korean war parachutes and they're they're a funky looking camouflage material which 
you know, my, my past experiences being deployed with foreign armies, I'm like, oh, it's got to be like uh, in Australia, you know, foreign, foreign army camouflage. Yeah. You know, you have no idea. So I'm at a, a museum, the Infantry Museum in Fort Benning, Georgia, and I'm walking through the World War II exhibit and patent and, and, you know, continuing wars. And this was actually on display there as a, as a parachute they used at the last bit of World War II into, into Korean War and actually used some of the cargo versions into Vietnam. And I sat there and said, I got thousands of these. <laughs> I am like, stop, don't do anything with these. We, we need to do something cool. Yeah. So we made backpacks. I mean, that's very cool. It's fantastic. I'm, I'm so glad to be a part of it. And, uh, you know, our mission is really to build this creative work environment for for uh, like-minded uh, veterans um, mm -hmm. and adults with disabilities to kind of get together and co-mingle and, and realize that there's more to life. You know, there's, there's, there's this, this passion entity that we all need, and especially as veterans, you know, building that camaraderie. We get, to, we get to work in a warehouse and mess around with some really cool historical fabric, military parachutes and, and clips and, you know, all kinds shackles of yeah. and all bunch of cool stuff. Well, that's good, man. Robbie, thank you so much for taking the time to be on. Absolutely. I appreciate it. And one more time, give uh, the website where they can go. Heavendrop.org, D-R-O-P-T. Heavendrop.org. Dot org. Very good. Awesome. All I right. appreciate it. Yeah, man. Anytime. So stick around. We're going to we're gonna learn more about Boone and Crockett now. We've got some really rich history here on uh, hunting and conservation and, and CJ and... Tony. Listen, and Tony. Big Tone. Big Tone. We call him Big Tone. Just Big Tone. He yep. is tall. Yep. But yeah, I'm shrinking. Everybody's tall related to me, you know. <laughs> what do you mean old. you're shrinking? Oh, <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, th th working for this board of directors like CJ, that they, <laughs> me up. they beat well, you down, huh? Well, I'll tell yeah. you. But yeah. He used to be 6'8". <laughs> <laughs> So, so talk, talk about the history. How did Boone and Crockett get started? So Boone and Crockett was uh, founded in 1887 by um, Theodore Roosevelt. And at the time, Roosevelt had just returned from a trip to his ranches in Medora, North Dakota. Uh, he'd spent two years out there uh, roaming around Wyoming and Montana and North and South Dakota. And he'd uh, witnessed a lot of things that uh, weren't very pleasant. You know, the decimation of our wildlife, mm -hmm. uh, the pillaging of our natural resources. Now, he was a big hunter himself. Huge hunter. Huge yeah. hunter. Huge hunter. hunter. Yep. yep. I mean, he's, a, he's the kind of president that we would want today to be in office to protect our second oh, yes, member sir. rights. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So, he, uh, you know, he, he had a ranch out there. It's called the Elkhorn Ranch on the Missouri River. And they, they call that today the cradle of conservation because that's kind of where Roosevelt hatched the idea that, you know, we need to take some pretty aggressive steps to get things in line and, right. get, and get man out of the picture and stop pillaging everything and killing everything and stacking it up. And so he went back to New York City in December of 1887 and he had a dinner at his house and he invited people of influence, people that were influenced in politics and in education, in industry and in science. And uh, these were the movers and shakers of the time. Mm -hmm. um, and, but the one thing that they had, the common thread that they had, everybody in that room was they were all sportsmen. They all loved to hunt. Mm -hmm. And so what spawned out of that very first meeting on December 7th, 1887, was the Boone and Crockett Club. And the first thing the Boone and Crockett Club tackled within the first about 10 or 15 years they were in existence was Yellowstone National Park. They protected Yellowstone National Park. They expanded Yellowstone National Park, and that was the 1892 Yellowstone Preservation Act, and that was okay. the very first thing that they they targeted. Then, when Roosevelt became president in 1900, um, he was president from 1900 to 1908. They uh, they really accomplished a lot, mm -hmm. and they established the Forest Service. They established the National Wildlife Refuge System, they established the Park Service, they enabled, uh, they, en they enacted state game laws, they made sure that the states had control of wildlife management within their respective states, um, uh, they banned market hunting, they uh, passed the Lacey Act, which was... What's the Lacey Act? So that was, uh, Lacey was an, a Boone and Crockett Club member, he was a member of Congress, mm -hmm. and... Uh, that is transportation over state lines of illegally taken game. Okay. 
And so, uh, so there was a lot that happened in that first decade of, 19, of, the, ni of the 1900s that, uh, that got conservation off the ground. And then about 1930, uh, Roosevelt passed away in 1921, or 1919. Um, in 1930, um, the ni early 1930s, the, the club members thought, you know, we got to kind of figure out a way to measure our success. Mm -hmm. And they started what Boone and Crockett's known t t today for, and that is our North American Big Game Records Program. And that success wasn't personal success, that was environmental success. Right. right. The, the impact that they were having on the, yeah. the environment. Yeah. Was all this was all this land that they conserved and all these species that they had now got under regulated management, was it working? Yeah. And the science at the time said that if you took a mature male specimen out of an ecosystem, that was an indicator that ecosystem was healthy. So they started the records book, and they encouraged hunters to turn their animals in and get mm -hmm. them scored, and make sure, and even today, you know, that database is used by wildlife managers all over North America. And if they're having a problem with their wildlife population, say whitetail, they'll look to another whitetail ecosystem that's mm -hmm. similar. And if, if the wildlife managers over there are having some success, you know, they'll share information back and forth. And so it's, it's really a research database. And we An have ongoing research database. An ongoing yeah. research database. We add to that. like the, the longest the longest running scientific study because it's been going on since for the 128 18. or whatever years. Yeah. 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 And so and, and so that, that and that's added to every year. <clears throat> you know, we add 1500 records every year. And you know, I don't know how many we got, probably 80 some thousand records overall since the inception of that program. Oh but my gosh. Uh, hopefully you guys went digital. <laughs> <laughs> we yes. you know, it's surprising you talk about that cuz we actually are in the process of doing that right now. Are you serious? <laughs> I'm just serious. Oh my gosh. Wow. Serious as a heart attack. I uh I'll tell you the and about uh, as much fun. <laughs> and about uh, yeah. as much fun. I mean, yeah. my yeah. gosh. Yeah. But uh, but you know we we're known for the records program. But but truth be told, our organization is very much uh, centered in conservation policy. You know, we have a full team in Washington D.C. We work on forest health. We work on wildlife diseases. We work on um, hunter uh, hunter access issues. Um, and you know we're kind of a think tank. We still have the hundred regular members that we always have had since it was the club was born in 1887. CJ is one of those guys, and uh, there's still people of influence and still people that um, are movers and shakers in that world. Um, you know we do have now a rank of professional members, about 160 of those. Those are people that run state agencies, mm -hmm. nonprofits. Um, outdoor writers, people that have done a lot for conservation, but we call, they're kind of the worker bees. A lot of academics, uh, gotcha. professors from wildlife programs at land-grant universities. We have four endowed chairs across the country. And, you know, we identify the problem, we figure out a solution, and then we take that to Congress and say, this is what you need to do to fix this problem. And yeah. after that, you know, once that bill's gone through and it's signed by the president, then we push in on the administrative side with Department of Agriculture, are, Department of Interior to get those things implemented. What are some uh, more recent uh, bills or laws that maybe you guys have helped um, establish? Uh, we did a lot of work on the Farm Bill. Uh, and what fat, is that? In fact, the forest titles in the Farm Bill were pretty much drafted by our people. Okay. Uh, as, as was the CWD, which is the wildlife disease component of that mm -hmm. bill. Uh, chronic waste disease. Chronic yeah. waste and disease. Yeah. Huge, huge threat to North American ungulate population, right. deer and elk especially. Um, the uh, omnibus bill that was in May of 2018 fixed a huge problem that we've been working on for over 20 years, um, and that was wildfire funding. Mm. You know, the Forest Service was spending 52% of their budget fighting these massive wildfires, mm -hmm. and that bill helped relieve them of that responsibility to a point and had more of a FEMA type approach to these national wildfires that are devastating our landscape. Yeah. Um, we've had a lot of work on, on, on access. You know, we have part of the um, Land and Water Conservation Fund. We work very hard on that. Part of that money goes back to get public access to public lands. Mm -hmm. um, We've also did a huge public land package, Senate Bill 47, that passed in February that enacted a, a 
the whole gamut of access and land uh, preservation, including reauthorization of the Land and Water Conservation Fund. So those are things that are very non-sexy to the public. <laughs> you know, I got to tell you, you know, it's um, it's work that has to be done. If, if, if our, our hunting heritage, our wildlife, our wild places are going to continue to exist, our, mm-hmm. you know, this, this is the kind of work that has to happen. And Boone and Crockett's been after it for 130 years. We've been climbing those hills. Right. And what's amazing about the, the whole thing is that this organization that uh, is, is conservation-centric uh, was, was developed by hunters, you know, which, you oh, know, yeah. the hunters seem to get the, the blame for, you know, the species dying out or, you know, our, our, our deer populations or whatever, you know. But it's actually the hunters that are helping to uh, preserve and protect. Yeah, it, it was it was hunters that pulled back. It's hard to even imagine as we see all the dead deer on the sides of the road these days that deer were almost extinct in a lot of areas. And yeah. elk, the, the, the turn of the century from, from 1800s into 1900s, wildlife populations were utterly decimated. And... For people who haven't been, so I'm almost 60 years old. For people who haven't been alive long enough to have seen how wildlife numbers are so much greater today than they were 50 years ago. Right. It, it's not about the good old days. We're living the good old days right now. <laughs> the better days because, are now. Yeah. And hunters did make that possible. Hunters brought that back. Right. From, and it from, wasn't just the hunters that were killing off uh, the you know the herds you know it was man coming in moving taking down their habitats you know it was you know a lot of it now moving tony, in. tony mentioned earlier about market hunting so when you think of restaurants and taverns in little western communities servicing their clientele by hunting the local animals well the local it, it just can't support that type of pressure so right. so approaching all of this with a with a very thoughtful sense of limited take, monitoring what you're doing, adjusting what you're doing, nurturing these animal populations back to back to a healthy place, right. and then keeping them there. We talked a lot about it the last we time. Did. Of, yeah. You know, when you get a population down to a certain point, they struggle to even come back compared to when you have a healthy population, a healthy herd, mm-hmm. they generate so many new animals, calves and fawns every year that it's it's this it's this resource that you can harvest and it will rebound. Yep. You get an animal population down to an unhealthy place and you're one Australian fire away from uh, <laughs> right. you know just having something yeah. catastrophic because there's not enough animals. So it's so critical what so many organizations are doing and and I'm thrilled to be a part of Boone and Crockett because it 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 tends to be a bit of an umbrella organization. Um, you know, coalescing the efforts of lots of other organizations right. into a into a, a laser a focus, point to make yeah. something happen. Yeah. yeah. So the other thing that that hunters did, and, and as as did fishermen, I don't want to forget our friends with fins, but um, you know, they tax themselves. So mm-hmm. not only do they buy hunting and fishing licenses, but you know, the Pippin Robertson Act, the Dingle Johnson Johnson Act. There's companies in this building that are paying taxes and have for many many years to support wildlife conservation yeah and they voted that on themselves nobody told them to do it they did it on their own yeah. and that's what a lot of the uh, um, the non I guess hunting related population doesn't understand is that you know they're trying to shut down gun companies they're trying to shut down ammunition companies they're trying to shut down you know a lot of our 2a backed companies but these companies are the ones who are actually taking care and doing the conservation that yeah, that yeah. they that they you know condemn us for that's right and yeah. they you know and unfortunately that's a little known fact you know i mean they write those checks every quarter mm-hmm. and uh, that money flows right through the federal government back into the states for wildlife management yeah. every quarter yeah, they're not allowed to use it for anything else no, which is restricted. which is very unique. It was they call it earmarking. Is that yeah. what they? Hunters yeah. are are the very uh, they're very pragmatic people, and they knew that legis, legis, uh, 
politicians tend to use money for things other than what it was intended for. Mm, no. And so, so <laughs> this particular money was written right into the law that that's all you can use it for. That was it. And they've tried to get smart. around it actually, and it's oh, it's, I'm sure. It's held. Oh yeah, no, wow. they've they've tried they've tried to grab it, but so far haven't had any luck. But uh, but it it's a it's a great story. The now story have have other have other countries. Uh, or the other organizations from other countries come to you guys to help uh, build a, a model similar to what you're doing in their country? Have you had that level of impact yet? Not really. Um, you know, well, I, I should take that back. So there is an organization in Europe that almost goes back as far as we do. Okay. It's called the CIC. and um, But, you know, the culture over there is just totally different. You know, they don't, you know, it's different over there. They don't have public, you know, they don't have firearms, you know. If you if it's private land, um, you know you can hunt it, but it's not public accessible land. Uh, so they they face a real dilemma over there in terms of supporting a healthy hunting style. Although there's really truly a lot of it that goes on. What we have done with them is help them write their records book. So they okay. use the same scoring system in Europe that we use here in North America, and it's the Boone and Crockett scoring system. Oh, okay. So that's um, cool. But, but the North American Model of Wildlife Conservation was created by members of our organization and other organizations, and it's unique to North America. It's, it's I was going to gonna ask, you know, because I'm surprised that maybe more countries haven't come to you guys, or maybe you, do you have you gone to other countries to, to see if, you know, they're doing something similar other than the one, you know, like that? But I guess you have, because you just answered the question. That you're, yeah, it's this is just, unique to our it's a culture it's our continent. Thing. It's a culture. Yeah, thing. <clears throat> I'll say add something that what's very unique with the North American model is the concept that the wildlife itself is kept in trust for the public. So the wild animals are managed. Own, I don't want to say owned because that, right. that's not what I'm meaning here. But they're 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 managed by the public, not by the landowner. So you can own a bunch of land. The wild, the wildlife running to and fro across is not your land yours. is not yours. You don't own that. That unless is it's cows. Not, <laughs> see, in, in other countries, that is not. That's not that's the not starting place, and so it's hard to build the rest of the conservation model without that core underpinning of a of a democracy of a of a, the fact that this stuff is all held in trust for the public for the public benefit. Right. And what CJ is referring to outside North America, that culture has existed for centuries, and our country's only, you know, a couple centuries old. And, sure. You yeah. know, so we kind of learn from We're still stakes. new. Yeah, yeah way back free. when it was the king's forest and it was the king's animals, and you lost body Cut your parts hands off, for, yeah. <laughs> for, you know, for poaching, which brings us to an opportunity poaching. that... Uh, that uh, I'll let Tony tackle this one because we were just talking about it. Yeah, so, <clears throat> you know, one of the initiatives that I mentioned that I... Uh, I talked a little bit about our policy work, but one of the, the initiatives that we're working on right now is um, is a, an anti-poaching campaign. Okay. And, um, you know, the poaching is a pretty complicated issue. It really is. And um, it, it re- we started thinking this through when the Cecil media debacle over the... The lion? The lion in yeah. Yeah. Africa. That lion was never poached. It was shot legally. You know, the media just had a field day with it. And part of that field day was in interspersing the term hunting and poaching a lot. So we decided we need to do something about straightening out the understanding that hunters are not poachers. Poachers are not hunters. Poaching is illegal. Hunting is not. And so as a result of that, we started looking at restitution rates and fines in all the states, with, you know, by doing surveys with the law enforcement personnel and and come to find out that some states are pretty stout on that. Some states are not. Some states want some help. Um, we also have a, a have a challenge now uh, in some states that don't have legislation mm-hmm. that empowers them to you know have restitution and fines on, on poaching. Poaching itself often goes undetected. Sure. And um, unless somebody else witnesses it or it turns out. the per- person in, exactly. they're never going to know what's happening. And then if it is detected and it goes to court, even if it's mandated in, sta- in state statute, what is supposed to happen to that individual? Oftentimes, the judges look at it as a victimless crime. Mm. 
And I will tell you that based on initial research, we're we're not talking a small amount of lost money for conservation. We're talking tens of millions of dollars. I was going to say, is there a, a study on the the impact that poaching has as far as that goes? That's what we're working on now, and the, te- the you know the test dates that we've had, it's 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 staggering the amount of money yeah. that we're talking. Because it's going to be, I mean, if if the local the local uh, officials aren't enforcing the laws, then it's hard for you to track it. And sometimes the local officials aren't able to. I mean, there's there's some states where, you know, your your local game wardens are expected to be police officers. Yeah. And they don't have any resources. Right. And uh, you know, and so it's it's uh, there's a whole host of problems, <laughs> issues related to this. You but know, it's, it's more than just grabbing a nice pair of horns out of season, or it's more than just grabbing some venison out of season. Yeah. You're impacting wildlife management. But, you know, those numbers, that, that number of tags that was issued, was issued for a reason. Right. There's, there's a harvest that is collected and tracked, and that drives what's released, you know, the, the tags that are released the next year. So it's a, it's a very finely managed scenario right. that, that poaching just sucks off the side of it. It's 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 not good. So it's based on science. It's, mm-hmm. it's where these numbers and and when they're coming in and the poaching numbers aren't factored in, then that obviously like you were saying it just des- it decimates the you know the whole project, you know the whole process of yes. It it just of the it, conservation. It, 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 it and and it costs money because that's and money that in restitution and fines doesn't go back to the state wildlife agencies for management. Right. Um, you know, and you know what, what CJ alluded to is, you know, it's it's one thing to be a subsistence issue. You know, if you just need meat in the freezer and you don't have enough, it's still against the law and it's still wrong. But you know, the individual that goes out and shoots an animal to take the horns off the top of its head, that's a special case. Yeah. That's a, that's that's a sin. That's not trying to subsist, you know, live off the land. It's no, not. absolutely, yeah. And but both of them are problems, but the one is a much greater uh, problem than and, the other. And, yeah. and, and and we do have to we have to address all of that. But like I said, it's just it's really complicated, and, and we're just now starting to turn over. Well, I'm going to use the term peel the onion, and it's a pretty big onion. Yeah. So uh, what are you guys going to be doing in the future to address that? What have you got in place right now? I actually just had a meeting with some folks this morning. Um, we're going to start. We've got, we, we know what the restitution rates are in the states that actually have restitution rates. The next step we're going to take, we're going to take two more steps. One is going to be addressing the legal template for legislation that we can give the states that they can enact then to have solid restitution and fines mm-hmm. for poaching. And then... The other step we're going to take is to try to educate our judicial system that, hey, there's some serious economics you guys need to be paying attention to. This is not a victimless crime. Yeah. And, uh, and we just, uh, you know, we're just mapping out a three-year plan to get this off the ground. Cool. What can we do as uh, responsible, interested hunters, uh, you know, in, in making sure that, you know, this very delicate process that you guys have set up uh, and implemented that, that we ensure that it continues to work? Well, for the poaching stuff. Don't poach, yeah. <laughs> yeah don't, you know, I mean, and, 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 don't, and, don't, and don't hesitate to turn these guys in. You know, it, because and you can do it anonymously, I'm sure. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Don't, don't hesitate because they're, they're, they're breaking the law no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. In the big picture of things, um, you know, act responsibly. Be responsible hunters. Don't, you know, don't, don't do things like, you know, post- obnoxious pictures with blood going everywhere <laughs> on Facebook and you know yeah. you know don't because, be gratuitous about yeah, it because yeah. we have a lot of enemies out there you know our, the sure. antis are I mean we're we're in the epitome of our strength here at the shot show these everybody in here hunts and but you know when you look at the numbers of people in here it's pretty uh, doggone impressive but yeah. there's a lot more out there that are against us so I always act responsibly act ethically don't take long shots if you can't make them you know d- use Use your mind to make a decision. Is this an ethical shot to take? Is it not an ethical shot? Because it's all about what we represent as if, hunters. If there's a question, don't take it. Yeah. Right. If you got to no, ask yourself that, don't take it. <laughs> nope. Be exactly. responsible, respect the animal itself, and respect the land you're on. Yep. Because we are brand ambassadors for this sport. So our actions speak for us. And if we want a future in this sport, we also have to remember that we are not the majority in this country. 
the majority of people do not hunt. But the vast majority of people are ambivalent to hunting. They, they kind of understand that it's critical to wildlife management. I don't know that they fully grasp no, that. No, I don't that, think they do. That's either. another <laughs> education opportunity for us. It is. For, to, to educate the non-hunting public. And, and so for us as hunters, our opportunity is to be able to tell the story, the conservation story, to a non-hunter in a way that's not offensive. It's not, you're going to pry this out of my cold, dead fingers. <laughs> it's, yeah. you ought to be thanking me because I'm spending money and time, and I'm out there. I'm managing wildlife for you. There's healthy wildlife out there for you and your kids to go see because I'm, I'm a North American hunter. I am, I am a member of the most effective wildlife management team in the world, right. the North American Fair Chase Hunter. And there so, you man, you ought to be thanking me. You ought to not be battling. <laughs> Amen, with me. brother. <laughs> Amen. So, as far as uh, I mean, it, you don't run on thanks and you don't run on praise. Uh, where do you guys get your funding from? How do you how do you fuel this so organization? We are, we are a club. You know, okay. I mean, we're not we're not an event based organization like a lot of other nonprofits out, out there in our space. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have banquets. We don't have conventions. We don't have any of that. Um, we operate. Again, off members' dues, contributions within our own organization. And how many members do you have? So we have 100 regular members. That's okay. the way Roosevelt set it yeah, up. Yeah, that, that's all we can have, 100 that, regular by, members. By bylaws. Yeah. And then, uh, again, these are people of influence. In yeah, somebody has to die or retire or get bumped off right. uh, for us to take on a new member. Okay. And then we have 160 of those, that professional category of members that I told you about, the, the academics and the wildlife managers and those kinds of people. Right. Uh, we do have a grassroots base called our associate member program. Okay. Um, people can join for 35 bucks, and they get four issues of Fair Chase magazine, full of great stuff, great hunting stories, good update on how, what, what's happening. Yeah, a little, little bit of front. that insider track. Yeah. yeah okay. and, uh, and so we do have a grassroots base. Not a huge number, but but a pretty good bunch of folks out there that, that, that and, are aggressive. And space. there's no limit on that. Nope, number. no limit on that. So anybody can go there. So our listeners who want to be uh, uh, members, they can just go to your website. Is that where they go? Yep. And, and yeah, they can go to www.boon-crockett.org. Okay. And, and that's, that's a good first step right there. You want to get more involved in uh, conservation, uh, go and do a, I mean, 35 bucks ain't nothing. You know, thirty-five right. a year is that what it is? Yep. Yep. I mean, that's crazy. You know. Yeah, and they'll and they'll get a good return on their investment. The, the magazine is outstanding. You know, it's the best publication out there, and like it's chuck full of information on, you know, everything from actual hunting stories to what are the most recent records in this quarter, you know, into the, you know, into the record book. Right. Um, and uh, and and also updates on what our policy people are doing, what our research people are doing what our education people are doing so they can be proud of being that $35 a year member. So I got a question. So it's, it's called Boone and Crockett. So how did they come up with the name Boone and Crockett? Were they around then? Was No. I, I think Dang that was uh, uh, childhood fantasy of Teddy Roosevelt. Is that exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. So, so Daniel Boone and David Crockett were the most famous frontiersmen of the time. Famous hunters, yeah. When they, when they started the organization. So that's, what, <laughs> that's where it came from. Name us after that those that is where it came from. <laughs> okay. And truth be told, one of those guys was exa exactly the type of ethical hunter we just were talking about. But that's okay, you know. Yeah. We learned our lesson. <laughs> we learned our lesson. <laughs> <laughs> well, very good. Tony, thank you so much for taking the time to be on and uh, give thank us a little, you. little more deeper understanding of uh, what Boone and Crockett is all about. And uh, CJ, thank Always you. Always a pleasure. Thank you for all that you were doing for because not just Boone and Crockett, but, you know, our last episode, there's some other organizations that you're involved with, and uh, this is a, a huge passion of yours. You know, we want to talk more about it on this show, so we're going to start doing more episodes that are wildlife and nature conservation centric. I'd be happy to. Yep. So you send us the, the people, and we'll get them on here, and we'll educate. Fair enough. Because <laughs> that's what we do here. We we not only educate, but we legicate. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. We legicate the uneducated on the Talking Loop podcast. <laughs> Great. Thanks and, for uh, having me on. I sure appreciate it. Absolutely. And Robbie, again, thank you for being on. I appreciate it. Oh, I turned your mic down, sorry. Absolutely. I mean, what a great opportunity. I mean, I, I learned so much from this. I mean, uh, it's things that I've never even thought about with wildlife conservation. I, I very much appreciate you for having me on and, and 
for doing what you do. It's it's fantastic. Well, you'd be proud of what you're doing too, Robbie. Well, thank you. Special oh, yeah. deal. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. All right, guys. More coming from the 2020 Shot Show here at the official lead quarters of Buck Knives. Coming up. The Fiocchi family has been producing high-quality ammunition since 1876. In 2020, Fiocchi's launching a full line of premium products, everything from self and home defense to the long-range categories. The Fiocchi Blue Guardian line will feature specially tuned products specifically for home and self-defense, featuring lead-free technology and the only NATO-certified zero-pollution primer in the world. Fiocchi's a proud sponsor of the Talking Lead Podcast and the Leadhead Brigade. Fiocchi trains... Yoki protects. Yes. May I have your cards, please? And you go by Peter? My name is My name is Pierangelo, but they call me Piero. Peter. Piero. 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 Pierangelo, maybe it's better. Piero, Franco, yeah. and Agnes. Agnes? Agnes. 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 Agnesi? Agnes? Okay. Agnes in English and yes in Italian language. And we are uh, Garment? Garment? Yes. Yes. The brand. Garment International. And you have boots? Yes. Is yes. that what we're talking yeah, about? The number. Do you have uh, pictures for me or something? Picture of what? Picture of what? Oh. A boot? Or a boot. That'll be great. Maybe. Please. Very nice. Thank you. Oh, yes. I like props. Props are great. This is awesome. Okay. Aga, she talk about the product. Okay. Agnes will. Yes. She, yes. Okay. She is the technician, the expert. Gotcha. Just to inform you, I am the president. Your president? Mr. Mr. Franco is the vice president of sales. Okay. President, VP. VP sales. VP sales. And she's the boss. No, totally not. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm in charge for European markets, so not for US market, but I'm also the expert of products, so expert boots. Okay, you're the boss. No. <laughs> Always the women are the oh, boss. Yeah. Right, exactly. I met it twice. Yeah. I don't know you. <laughs> Pierangelo is the big boss. He is the boss. So as you lead heads can tell, we've got some people from uh, Virginia here joining us. No. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> I think you guys are from uh, Italy? Italy, yeah. Okay. yeah. What part of Italy are you from? Italy, uh, near Venice. Close to Venice. Near Venice? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to turn you up a little bit. Don't be shy to get in. You got to no, get no. him up on you. Get up on it there. Yeah. I'm so, Italian uh, too, but I live in the U.S. It's 20 years that I live in the U.S. Okay, so they've been here for a minute. So from my left to my right with Garment International, uh, and uh, they are bringing some... some cool boots that we're going to be talking about here uh, to the market. We've got the president, we've got Peter. Yeah. And say, and say your your real Italian name. Pierangelo. That's awesome. And then we got Franco. You pronounce perfectly. Okay. <laughs> say say your whole name, Franco. Franco. And Franco nice. Campesato. Oh, I love it. And Agnes. Yes, correct. And say your name for us. Agnes Agnese. Last name? Vishnevska. It's a little bit complicated. <laughs> <laughs> so, Agnes, I want you to get closer to the microphone, please. Okay. It's directional, so, so get up on it like this when you talk. It's correct. We want to hear your beautiful voice. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Yes. So you can kind of hear yourself up there. So you guys are um, an Italian company. How did you make it to America? But I would like to present me. I'm the president of this company. Mm-hmm. It started from uh, 64, 9,000, oh, sorry. 1964? Yes. Okay. But we bought the company in, uh, 19, in uh, 20, 2014. 2014, you 20, came over to yes. the United States? Yes, but uh, I'm very proud to be here because the first time for me mm -hmm. in this moment because I'm the president, but uh, my role is like in Italy to be a president. And I would like to, I'm very, very proud to be here because I know that what it is important for the soldier, your soldier, mm -hmm. that they use our boots. Because uh, our products, I saw maybe in these days that they, uh, they appreciate a lot. But uh, I would like maybe to to give my the word to Mr. Franco that he represent me better. Okay, very good. So uh, you guys have been in the United States market for uh, 2012. Years now. 2012. 2012. And are you uh, have you specifically been serving the Law enforcement military, or yeah. are you also serving the uh, civilian market? 
Okay, uh, Garmont, we have uh, two divisions. One is uh, tactical, mm -hmm. okay, and the one is outdoor division because the company has a, a background in outdoor. Uh, so, the beauty, the beauty of, uh, of that is that we have an heritage because we produce very high-tech booth for climbers. Mm -hmm. and uh, yeah and uh, we are very strong also in Europe with the outdoor business mm -hmm. and uh, we have uh, a lot of te technicalities in every product so and the same story is in, in tactical but how we made the business very very strong in the United States with tactical is because you know it's different compared with the outdoor business that sure. we have different kind of consumer yeah, we different mindset yeah yeah we started uh, we started with the uh, uh, in 2012 with the soldier, the soldier start uh, uh, wearing the product and they have an appreciation for the quality, for the durability, for the comfort of mm -hmm. the booth. And uh, through word of mouth, we became very strong and very famous. So in this case, the military, they have an appreciation for the quality because they need the quality more than brand awareness in this case. Sure. So, and by the way, we are very proud to serve the soldier in the United States. Very Extremely good. proud. Now, uh, I know that you know, Italian shoes have a, uh, have a reputation, you know, a, a good reputation. You know, with somebody at saying, at hey, you know, I'm wearing a pair of good. <laughs> Italian shoes, you know, you're like, oh, you, you dropped some coin on that, you know, very nice, very nice shoes. So, uh, and, and you brought some today with you, and I'm looking at them right now, and I'm, I'm assuming this is probably your outdoor tactical line uh, yeah. material yeah. here, but you've got some very nice leather um, like eight inch, six inch boots here, uh, as well with the steel toe, or exactly. maybe that's a composite or something there. Exactly. Um, but they look very, very nice. So, Thank uh, you. let's let's talk about uh, your different lines that you have. So uh, we introduced it uh, at first uh, T8 uh, platform products. Uh, I speak about uh, eight inches boots, mm -hmm. and uh, the first one the best seller uh, till two years ago was the T8 Bifida. Today, T8 Bifida. This is the name of the product. Spell the last Bifida. Bifida is the is the name of the bottom mm -hmm. made by Vabram, but okay. uh, people recognize this product like T8 Bifida garment. And we are really proud about uh, the success of this product because Till today, on the top 10 list of the boots that uh, US military selected, uh -huh. the T8 Bifida is at first position. Oh, well, congratulations. Is, yes, thank yeah. you very much, very nice. which is really fantastic. You, you know, we offer lightweight, high performance boots that provides unsurprised comfort and uh, also a suitable for season uh, environment and uh, particularly also for the amphibious environment. Why? Mm -hmm. You can see this uh, in this place uh, in the lateral bottom of the product. Uh, yeah. uh, we have the open little holes, uh, little vent holes. Yes, open holes. And thanks thanks to these uh, two open holes, uh, we grant uh, the correct ventilation. Mm -hmm. And also, if the soldiers have to walk in the environment amphibious, the water is going out really quickly. Right. And uh, so it gives it another way to escape the boot quicker exactly. and then the air out with the, with the air holes it dries exactly uh, yeah. which is big big success and also the high high quality of the raw materials that we use our goal is to select at first all of raw materials that we use in our product mm -hmm. only after tough selection uh, when we are sure that the material in terms of leather in terms of uh, cordura nylon is is correct we start to produce and we we make the selection every time every time our uh, quality control is present on the production now uh, this year we presented something new in the market uh, f particularly for the air forces okay uh, the product is uh, t8 endurance air force with the toe cap protection but which is the particular uh, in in this market you can see toe cap protection by steel toe cap or uh, or composite toe cap right. garment is the unique company that we are introduced aluminum toe cap so you're uh, using you aluminum can, okay you, you can feel it uh, 
uh, Y aluminum. The lighter. Bravissimo. Exactly. Yeah. It's really lighter. So we offer the same protection till to 200 joule pressure. Okay. Yes, you can buy it also. <laughs> As I stick me, it in my mouth. Nothing will, will I didn't change. have breakfast today. So <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thanks to using the aluminium, uh, the, we guarantee the lightweight of the product and uh, the security, the safety is totally the same. Uh, plus, uh, we add also anti puncture bottom, which okay. is really important, and no one uses this technology. But if you think about soldiers, that they're walking in the particular environment oh, sure. it's really important for the safety of the so soldiers and also the rubber that we use it's oil resistance heat resistance benzene resistance so in particular in the airports when you have on the ground some petrol oil etc sure. etc et so we can guarantee full safety to the soldiers during the time of the work and do you know the thickness of your your soles Yes. What is the thickness of these? Uh, the 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 thickness. Uh, I if you ask me exactly in millimeters. No, you have to uh, give the exact. Just no, but uh, is is uh, it respect uh, the good liver of anti abrasion, uh, thanks to the uh, good quality of rubber and uh, six seven millimeters uh, of the rubber layer. Uh, you can uh, we respect uh, the anti slip abrasion and also the last but not least feature is the fast drop suitable. Bond Bottom. Mm -hmm. If you can see this uh, particular design exactly, yep. right in the uh, the arch area. The, yes, in the arch area, uh, we have the uh, rubber that is helpful to stop the speed of the operator uh, in uh, terms that when uh, someone go down, they're fast roping. Exactly, yep. with this technology, oh, okay. uh, feel the help. So that helps uh, with the rope, get the get exactly. the foothold on the rope right there. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And the lateral zip for sure, which is com yeah, the zip comfortable, yeah. yes, uh, to, to quickly opening. Very good. Nice, thank you. And what were these called again? The name? T8 Endurance Air Force, full safety. This is uh, to, during the SHOT Show this year, we present this product as a totally new. Okay. And, uh, uh, the small one, the Nemesis. That yeah, this is the see. one I'm really liking right yes, here. Yes, like. uh, Nemesis is. Uh, we are very proud. We use the new tech. A, a lot, a lot of technology is this product. At uh, first, the fabric. It's not Cordura, not Nalion, not polyester. So you will ask me what, what is, is it? Exactly. <laughs> what is it? This is really unique fabric. F uh, Fifty-eight percent of polyurethane. Okay. Why polyurethane? Because polyurethane offer to this upper the cut resistance and the highest abrasion resistance. Exactly. Yes, which is which is really important, particularly yeah. for the special for the special force. Can I? Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. So I've pulled out my buck knives here, uh, and this is the uh, the the czar. Yes, it and, works. And and it's super sharp, and I'm going across the boot right now. This is the material and nothing yeah. no cuts no abrasions whatsoever very yeah. nice yeah exactly and nice. uh, this boot offer it's sharp too yeah, very good. Yeah. yeah speed agility lightweight uh, particularly for operators from special forces units uh, the product is really really silent uh, of course you can see we use the Gore-Tex membrane we offer totally waterproofing also it's uh, bactericial proof chemical proof micro uh, and anti -bur 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 -bur. Uh, thanks to yeah. the Gore membrane uh, for a special design for the military the bottom as you can see is made with uh, rubber by Vibram uh, the ab abrasion resistance is very good and also slip resistance uh, what's more, we use our ADD technology. Garment has uh, a lot of. Please. No, no. Know. There is. A, they, I like to explain that inside there is a, a big, a big um, combination between double damper. There is inside a, a good technology. Yes. That you can explain better. Yes, double damper. But you, ca you cannot see, but you can feel that you wear. There is inside to the shock absorber inside. There are a lot of. What size is this? Inside. Yeah, it's impossible to see because uh, well, I can't wear it. It's too small. Mitzel. I would put it on, but I <laughs> yeah, it's too uh, small. Mitzel. You can wear it. It's your size, small foot. Which number do you have? This is it's U a eight. UK, eight, UK eight, but not US. UK eight. 
Oh, it's a UK eight. So yeah, it's small for you, I guess. So. Oh yeah, yeah. I wear a ten. We have Cinderella. <laughs> okay. Joking. Right. Exactly. So uh, Justin is trying it on right now. We're gonna we're gonna test the comfortability of this yeah. this boot. It this looks like it's very comfortable. Yeah, and the sensation. It's is the one uh, when you were handing me all the boots. The one that I was eyeing the most. Now, does it come in different um, uh, heights as well? Yes, yeah. we have four inches and six inches. Perfect. And the sensation of wearing is like have one pair of socks, no boots, totally. Believe mm. me, because it's ultra ultra lightweight, yeah. and the fitting is really. It looks like your it's. Foot. It's just like it's a, a asymmetric. A, a, asymmetric. Yeah. Yes. It, it conforms is, to the foot. Exactly. Yeah. This is ADD garment technology. Asymmetric yeah. lacing system, asymmetric tongue, asymmetric calf, because we follow the natural Pattern. morphology of the foot, you know? Yep. And uh, it's your size. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's small. It's yes, probably a little small for you. Oh, for sure, the ADD, ADD technology, it's our patent. We registered the technology because for us is it's Is that really the material? Yes. No, this is the, the system of the process. Oh, okay. Like but the, the material... It's, it's very, very expensive material, mm -hmm. very, very expensive. But the guarantee, as you can see, is very, very safety for your foot, for your feet. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And is in every shoes, in the basically. All your shoes have that. Yeah, that the, technology. The major. Now, yes, are you making? Just to give you, just to yeah, give you a, a, one example, in terms of upper for boots, abrasion standard resistance. It's it's only twelve thousand cyclists on the test. Mm -hmm. This material resist at more than 300,000 cycles. So double, 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 and again right, double, right. never ending, you know? Because thanks to the polyurethane material mm -hmm. mixed with nylon, uh, it's really successful. Very nice. What do you think about it? Comfortable, yes. Yep. And also, let's, the, let's the, look, yep. look the asymmetric technology. It's very comfortable. That's enough from the peanut gallery. So. <laughs> okay. okay. So and these are called again the, what are they called? Name? Nemesis, uh, uh, four inches, and Nemesis, six inches. And the Nemesis. Last, yes, the okay, last the but Nemesis. not least, uh, you can see the pocket, the secret pocket uh, yeah, for, for the stuff laces. Yeah, for stuff in the laces, yes. Yes, because the operators, they love to be clear, oh, yeah. nothing outside. So yeah, I love that uh, that feature. I've seen it on a this couple of other brands concept. that are doing that, and yes. everybody should do that, Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yes, this is really comfortable yeah. and offer more safety for now the operators. Now give us, uh, give our listeners the where they can go and find your, your footwear. You got a website, social yeah. media? Franco? Yes, we have a website with social media, and uh, also we are here at the show, if there are people here around. Mm -hmm. I don't have with me my boot number, I forgot, but... <laughs> <laughs> From the mo uh, let me check. It's okay, nobody's listening live, so... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you, you can find our products oh, uh, in how many shops? Uh, in one hundred thirty-three point of sales okay all yeah. across US. America yes. all across America yes. I don't want to mention any name because I don't want to forget somebody well sure. <laughs> sure sure anyway we are very well known so they can go to your website yes. which is let me check so Facebook yeah. is at Garmin North America Instagram is at Garmin boots and it's Garmin North America dot com, baby. Uh, thank exactly. You. There you go. You know, <laughs> I'm in charge of Europe, so you got me. That's okay. It's on your card, Franco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. you got it. You got yeah. it right there. So, thank you guys so much for coming by and sharing your uh, your boots, your information with the Leadhead Brigade. I'm thank sure they're going to go check them out now. Um, I have a last message before. Okay. Finish, okay. Okay. If I can, you you may. Okay. Thank go you ahead. so much. But first of all, I would like to say thank you to Big the you. Uh, to you for the opportunity for the interview. Oh, absolutely. It's my pleasure. Second, I would like to say thank you to the Garmon Tactical Division United States for what they did because they did really an amazing job. Yeah. I would like to say thank you to all our clients and our and the, for to all the soldiers for their loyalty. That's it. Very good. Very good. That's a great thank message. You again. Thank that, you again. that is a great message. So you guys had an opportunity to, to, to walk around SHOT Show. Is this the first time you've been to SHOT Show? Yes, for me, yeah. yes. For me, too. All right. Second. So I'm going to start with, with the president here, El Presidente. What are your opinions, uh, your first impressions of SHOT Show? <laughs> it's, it's impossible to understand. <laughs> if, <laughs> right? if, you, if you don't see 
it's impossible to understand. It's impossible. Very, yeah. very big, big and important organization. Very, very good. It, it's very awe and mouth dropping, right? It's like, but I think that unbelievable. Uh, you are made this. Uh, I think for for the for the world because mm -hmm. we need to save Absolutely. the world. Okay, we need. I want to 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 talk. Uh, thank you very much for the soldier because they they use us for the world for the pay, for the peace. Mm -hmm. The peace. Right. They because bring peace with your boots. Yes. Right. Yes, we need it. Exactly. Very Thank good. you very much. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Franco. For me, I, after 20 years in the United States, I should have an idea how important is this kind of business. But not like the feeling that I have right now. Really, it surprised me. Even more than what I thought. Very Much good. more. Agnes. Wow, about the SHOT Show? The SHOT Show, yeah. What, it's the what are your thoughts on SHOT Show? Absolutely the most important one that we have in worldwide, uh, totally. You know, in Europe we have different ones, Rosatory, Millipon, and so. But SHOT Show, you collect all together everything. Uh, each kind of division in the hunting, uh, Absolutely. Uh, weapons, uh, services, Forces. law enforcement, defense all together and uh, if you are a buyer or also if you are a producer you can do everything you want and you need uh, in in five, day, in five days uh, yeah. one day before and one day after maybe <laughs> <laughs> very good thank you very much well, thank you again. well thank you guys and welcome to america you guys you guys come back anytime you're welcome on the talking lead podcast whenever you got new products that you want to come on and talk about make sure you get in touch with us and uh, we'll get the word out Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank you. much. Very good. Thank you again. More Thank coming you. from the 2020 SHOT Show here from the official lead quarters at Buck Knives. This episode of the Talking Lead is brought to you in part by Occam Defense. The guys at Occam love the AK, but didn't love burning their hands, getting cut by their pre-sharpened gun, or the lack of options for accessories. After spending a few years in the lab, they've recently released the ODS 1775, which brings the best of the AR family to the Kalashnikov's reliability. It's still an AK under the hood. AK mags, forged Polish AK parts, but with American aerospace manufacturing practices and ingenuity. Check them out at OccamDefense.com or on Instagram at Occam Defense Solutions. Okay, Leadhead, so you, you could tell I had some good fun with that interview with Pete, Franco, and Agnes. A uh, great bunch of guys and gals there. They were really fun. Had a great sense of humor. Uh, I think they understood that you know there was a little bit of communication uh, gap there, but they did the best that they could, and I think they got the message across. And you know, definitely, like I said earlier, their boots are well worth it. So if you get an opportunity, go check those out. Uh, the Nemesis uh, are the ones that I've tried out, and the. Uh, those leather ones, the GTXs, I believe is what those are called. You know, I've tried them both out. Just a little little heads up, they tend to be a little more narrow than uh, your typical U.S. fit. So if you've got a wider foot, you definitely want to order those in a, a wide. So uh, go give them a shot over at Garmont Boots. And uh, you can go to, I think it's tactical.garmont.com and... Um, then you'll be able to find out where you can buy those from there. But that does it for another episode of the Talking Lead Podcast. Make sure you go and support those that support this podcast. Fioki Ammo. Go to FiokiUSA.com. That's F-I-O-C-C-H-I-U-S-A.com. And they've got good quality ammo. Uh, another uh, company that was based out of Italy. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, of course, you guys know that we've had Casey Betzeld on, who represents uh, Fioki USA and does a fabulous job representing them. I've been using their ammo here for the last few months. I got a new Keltec RDB in that uh, I've only been able to take out once, actually, because of the weather. Uh, the rain seems like it's nonstop here. Uh, but I will have some opportunity, looks like, here in the next couple of weeks. We're going to have some good weather. I'm going to take it out and uh, really put some lead down range with that thing. But uh, the day that I did take it out, it was, it was, I mean, it was amazing to shoot. And just right out of the box, I, mean, I was getting some great groups, some great accuracy. And I can only imagine once I get that barrel broken in, uh, 
the type of accuracy and, and grouping that I'm going to get with it. Uh, I am using the Modern Spartan Systems Accuracy Oil. I'm, I'm doing the conditioning of the barrel with, uh, with their oil, their accuracy oil. And you can go to Modern Spartan Systems website, and they've got instructions on what you need to do uh, to condition a barrel with their accuracy oil to improve your accuracy. And it does work. Uh, it's been proven. Uh, we've got several people that have been on the show that have talked about it. Charlie Melton is one of those. Uh, you know, he's one of the uh, best precision shooters in the world. And, uh, you know, he uses the modern Spartan systems. I've been using it for, you know, for years and years, even before I even met Charlie. I've uh, been using it here on the Talking Lead podcast. They're, they're cleaning products and, and the um, accuracy oil. So I'm running the RDB through that process, and it's no doubt going to improve the accuracy. And then, as you guys have seen on social media, I made a post that my Occam Defense Solution ODS 1775 came in. Yes. And I did take it out that day as well, and I was able to get some rounds through it. And, um, you know, again, not as many as I wanted to, but I am conditioning that barrel also with the modern Spartan systems, accuracy oil. And, um, I'm, I'm in between scopes on it right now. So the scope that I was using that day, uh, I'm not happy with it because it, uh, uh, is that it's a first focal plane. And as I zoom in, the reticle on this one, uh, is one that, it, the um, the reticle covers up the target. Uh, so, you know, as I get out to over 100, you know, 200, uh, it, it's really covering up my target. So I've switched. Uh, and I think I was using like a, a one and a half to six. And uh, the reticle on it just, just wasn't conducive for what I was trying to do. So I switched the uh, optics out. And I went to a one to eight with a different reticle that is going to make it uh, more conducive. It's still a first focal plane, um, but that center uh, reticle point is uh, different. So uh, once I get that worked out, I'll you know I'll talk about um, more specifics about that, and we're going to talk about it on the next AK corner also. And we're going to have a company on that specifically makes. Uh, scopes for AK-47s, or the 7.62x39, I should say. So that's going to be an interesting show coming up, so something to look forward to uh, mid-June, the, the 15th, typically when we release the AK Corner. Uh, but make sure you go and uh, pick you up some of that Modern Spartan Systems Accuracy Oil, their cleaning products, and of course that TVT engine oil additive. Um, just went through and serviced the lead sled the other day, and of course I topped it off with the TVT engine oil added to keep that engine running smooth. And don't forget about those discount codes from Mission First Tactical and LEO Takedown. Now the code is LEADHEAD. That's typically the discount code that all of our sponsors and friends of the show use when they're giving discounts. Uh, so uh, if I don't specifically give you a code, try that at one of the uh, you know, if you're shopping directly on their website, try that code. It may work. Uh, if there's not a discount code already set up, let me know, and I'll try to get one set up for you leadheads. Um, but you're going to get 20% off at Mission First Tactical, anything that you buy there, and then LEO Takedown, same thing on their website. You're going to get 10% off there using that leadhead discount code. But please, 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 like I said, that's how you... That's how you support me and sponsor me, sponsor the Talking Lead Podcast Show, is support our sponsors and friends of the show. Go and buy their products. Let them know that you hear about them here on the show and that you appreciate and enjoy their products. That means the world to me and this show. So thank you, Leadhead, so much for all your participation through the social media, interaction that we have when I make the post. I love seeing uh, that you guys are liking, sharing, commenting, uh, especially commenting with one another on you know things that we post about there too. Love seeing that. I want to see more of that. Keep it up. And then next episode, like I said, we're going to have some Canadians on and we're going to talk about that gun ban that has uh, just 
devastated the gun culture there in Canada. So stay tuned. That's coming up next episode on the Talking Lead Podcast. But until then, as always, Leadheads, keep your loved ones close and your firearms closer. <laughs>